So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to import files into Ansys Workbench um, using outside software such as SolidWorks or Rhino. Um, so in this case, I'm going to use SolidWorks, and there's actually two ways to do it. So the first way is from within SolidWorks. I'm going to open up SolidWorks here. Once SolidWorks is open, I'm going to open, and uh, the file I'm going to use is called Basic Plane. I'm going to open that one up. Here it is. Um, go back to the toolbar, go to Tools, Ansys 17.2, Ansys Workbench, click on that. So what this is going to do, it's going to take the SolidWorks part and now import it as a geometry into Ansys. So we should see a geometry pop up here. So that's a geometry just uploaded from SolidWorks, um, and that's all it is. But in order to do anything inside um, Workbench, like use Fluent, um, we actually need to open up the analysis system. So here it is. This is the, kind of the tree to follow how you're going to like step through the entire system. Um, so the first part you see here is geometry. Um, so we can pull that geometry in just by dragging it into that space. And now they're linked together, and now that plane is now inside of this tree for the system. So that's one way to do it. And the other way is a little simpler if you have Ansys open already. So you can just open up another fluid filled fluent. Here it is. It's the same looking box as this, but now there's nothing filled in geometry here like you see in this spot here. But we can right click geometry, import, browse, and based on what documents you have, um, here's that basic plane again. Double click, and now it's in there. So we now accomplish the exact same thing. So that's the first part of this video. So now you see there's two different ways to do it and similar methods done in Rhino. Um, but now looking at the mesh even further. So now I'm going to go back to the geometry first, right click geometry and edit geometry and design modeler. So why I'm doing this is to create the, the uh, workspace within the solver would use. So the big rectangle around the plane for a flow solution. Um, so the first thing I do once you see this workspace is empty, I have to go to import, right click, hit generate. It's going to generate the plane here just alone. Um, now I need to add that constraint around it. So I'm going to go to tools and enclosure. And under enclosure here on the side you can see the dimensions of what would be right now the default box. So it'd be, it's positive and negative direction. So it really this is a eight cubic meter box. So if I was to just generate now, go to enclosure one, right click, hit generate. You see this giant eight cubic meter cube relative to the plane. Um, so this is a little unnecessary for calculations because now the cells are gonna span all the way out this far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim down the X and Y directions. Um, so, uh, it, it makes the box more re reasonable. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut them in half in both directions. And now I'm going to recreate that enclosure. So right click, generate, and we now have a more reasonable flow solution box. It's still a little big, but for the simplicity of this case, it'll be okay. <clears throat> so now we have our geometry pulled into SolidWorks and now our fluid box for a solution later on. So now I'm going to go back to ANSYS um, Workbench and I'm going to right click on Mesh, Edit Mesh. So once you're in the mesh, uh, a good thing to do is label some of the boundaries or the walls if you have them. So in this case, we have both an outflow and on the other side an inflow. So I'm just going to name those real quick. So let's click on the face, right click, uh, create name selection, and call it outflow. I'm going to rotate over, selection. Sometimes the face can be a little confusing. And it rotated again. There we go. 
that's the inflow box. Uh, now if I go back to isometric, here we are. That face here would be inflow, and this face here is outflow. That would be used later, but it's good methodology to do, do now. You can call these walls if you want, but it's not as important. All right, so now the uh, we can talk about the mesh. So you're going to click on mesh, and down here uh, on the bottom left, you'll see a bunch of different options. Let me expand this. Um, so first important one is sizing. So there's two key features here that you might want to look into. So first is a size function. So the default in CFD here in ANSYS uh, Workbench is curvature. Um, so curvature is basing the size of the element uh, off the curvature of the vehicle or the aircraft, um, which actually isn't the right setting for this plane. If you remember the from SolidWorks, this plane's pretty straight edged vehicle. So curvature is not the way to go. And in fact, it won't work if you were to do it. So what you have to do is you have to change it to adaptive. So now it adapts to what the vehicle looks like. Um, the next one here is uh, relevance center. So coarse is, slight, is a generic one, medium and fine. So this changes the size of the overall cell relative. Um, so coarse would be a bigger cell uh, in the grid and then fine would be like a very small one. Um, which is if you're looking for all over the aircraft or box, very specific calculations at every little tiny point, that'd be good. But for this basic, we'll just leave it at coarse so it generates a mesh faster. And then if we go to inflation, go down to what's called growth rate. Um, here is how the cells expand out from the point of interest. So what the important part of that is, it, uh, is so from the tail to the outflow, it's not these tiny cells populate all the way out. They grow after the point of interest because it's not as necessary to look at every single tiny point for a solution when maybe a whole body downflow, <clears throat> it's now getting more consistent with the free stream was again. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it there at 1.2 at the default setting. So once that's done, I'm going to go back to mesh, right click mesh and hit generate mesh. And here we go, you see a mesh. And uh, you'll see it looks like a wireframe because they're selected up here. If I get rid of it, you can't see the plane, but put wireframe back on so I can see inside the plane. Uh, but I want to look a little closer at the plane here so I can click on any of these faces here, right click and then pre uh, suppress body. And now the body's gone so I can look at the plane. And look, here we are. Here's all, all these points are where the calculations would happen. Um, but there are different methods we can do to manipulate if we want to change what an element size looks like on this aircraft. So I'm just going to pick one of these wings for an example. So if I click on a face here, this wing, for example, and say I'm not happy with the cell size, I can go to mesh. Once that's selected, go to mesh, right click, insert, and go to re what's called refinement. So refinement is going to take the cell size, and now that you want that one changed, you can specify it. So refinement here, this is one, two, or three in um, fluent. One will change the previous cell length to one half, two will change it to one third, and three will change it to one quarter of the original cell length. So I'm just going to change the one just so you can see the difference here. And I'm going to right click on refinement, hit update, and mesh update. And you can see now the left wing is definitely much more fine than the right wing. So we, all we did was refine the mesh. Um, you can do similar things with the leading edge um, too, and also a whole body like the plane. Um, but the change there would be so if I go here to let edge, pick this one for instance, and then we'll mesh insert. You don't see, um, you'll see refinement again. You can do a similar thing that we just did before, or you can change the exact element size by do uh, size element. Um, but that's pretty much it uh, for creating a mesh in Fluent. Um, thanks for watching.